Let my mouth be filled with your praise, that I may sing aloud. My lips shall shout for joy when I sing to you. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, here finding ourselves in this fifth week of the Easter season, we have a gospel today about when Christ says that he is the vine and we are the branches and proceeds on to describe the implications for that, should we say, uh, reference in a day where agriculture or growing things really spoke to the people. It's a little bit different today. So sometimes we have to look at that. Also today, we have the memorial of Our Lady of Fatima. So let us keep Our Lady very much in mind as we place ourselves before this table of the Lord, for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, and prepare by recalling to mind those times when we have sin and asking our Lord's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who chose the mother of your Son to be our mother also, grant us that, persevering in penance and prayer for the salvation of the world, we may further more effectively each day the reign of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Our first reading is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to Mosaic law, you cannot be saved. Because there arose a little, no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them, it was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the presbyters about this question. They were sent on their journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia, Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as by the apostles and presbyters. They reported what God had done with them. But some from the party of the Pharisees who had become believers, stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and presbyters met together to see about this matter. The word of the Lord. A responsorial psalm. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord. And now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Jerusalem to give thanks to the name judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one who does, he prunes so that it bears even more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into the fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. 
But this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> this Gospel that we hear today begins, if you want to call it, the second portion of a farewell discourse in the Gospel of John that Jesus is giving, or you can call it the second discourse. As noted yesterday, the first one, the target, the focus, the audience was apostles, disciples. Now Jesus is giving it in a much broader way, the church, where we hear this parable of the vine. Now the people hearing this back in the day, immediately when they heard vine, it would indicate to them the people of Israel. That's what was understood to be the vine. However, we have clearly, we've changed, in a, so to speak, the vine here is Jesus Christ. A matter of fact, so much so that Christ says, and right out of the blocks, I am the true vine. Now remember, I've said this any number of times, that I am has huge significance in the Gospel of John. And to the audience hearing that, I am. Why? That was the name given to God in the burning bush. Because Moses asked, who are you? And he said, I am who am. So every time Christ uses that I am, he is really stating his divinity. And as we noted, in the Gospel of John, it's done over and over again, and it's done to make a point. The unity between the Father and the Son, the divine nature of Jesus Christ. Now, I noted that this second one was for this second farewell discourse was for the church. And clearly, a disciple's communion with Jesus Christ is also with God. We can't miss that woven in and out because we hear that, uh, and my father, that term, either the father, my father, is the vine grower. The role that God is playing in all of this is right together with Jesus. They're, they're interacting one is acting for the other. One is announcing through I am their relationship that they are God also. So the inner spiritual reality of what's going on here can't be missed. Jesus is the new vine. He says not only, he uses the word, I am the true vine. That is that idea that the, the house of Israel was. It's taken right out of the picture. The true vine. It's Jesus Christ, and we hear that. As noted, that, that I am that said. But he's also defining, in saying that, the relationship between himself, Jesus Christ, a, as the true vine, and the disciples. You know, um, <clears throat> certainly without a vine, you don't have branches. But without the branches, what is the vine? Yes, the vine may exist and it may be strong and it, it may be sturdy, but the whole point of the vine is to have the branches. And we have to understand that in this pruning idea, once again, I've told you before, I grew up on a farm and we had some fruit trees and some Russian olives, even growing in Wisconsin, along uh, in front of the road, next to the road where we lived. And every once in a while, particularly when I was young, I clearly remember this, my father would decide it was time to prune these. And he would go at it with a saw. And I used to lobby, try and go up to him and say, oh, don't take so much, Dad, that doesn't look so good. And he'd always say, no, when you prune trees, you have to do it till it hurts. It's got to almost offend the eye. Because then th what is there, what remains, will truly grow up and bear the fruit uh, produce the flowers, whatever it is, that are necessary. And he was right, because that's what happened. Immediately, no, tough to look at. Tough for a few days, for a few weeks. But with the months and the weeks going by, the leaves would come, the blossoms would come on these trees, and then the fruit would come, and it was there. Sometimes in our own lives, it isn't just someone else who has to do the pruning. 
Um, you good people who tune in, I have no doubt that you are, you are attached to that vine, that vine being Christ. You are a branch. We are. But sometimes we ourselves have to do the pruning. Um, not easy. Sometimes it hurts. But we're called, in a sense, to produce more fruit, to produce the better fruit, in, in a sense to, to blossom as we must, as one who is getting the strength from the vine and making the respective branches, you and I, stronger. But sometimes when these smaller branches come along, or maybe it's there and it's kind of dried out for some reason, it has to go away. And possibly when it's cut off there, another branch will come. Another will start to grow. In a sense, adding to that idea of church, adding to the spiritual reality of who you and I are called to be vis-a-vis -vis that vine that is Jesus Christ. So as we, we find ourselves, you know, with great difficulty going through, in a sense, this pandemic, it's also a time when we might think, well, hmm, I don't know if I can really afford to cut off any branches at this time. We have to. We have to in order to strengthen ourselves as the branch. We have to look to where that vine is in our life. Sometimes, you know, to the, the well, if, if some other vine grows up into the plant, the branch can almost lose its focus. It gets choked off from the vine. Okay, something else wraps around it, not getting the sunlight it should, not getting the grace into its life that the Lord gives to you and to me. So I think we have to take this imagery and not be afraid to let that parable speak to you and to me. Christ used these parables throughout Scripture to reinforce who we are to become as his disciples. And particularly in this time of the pandemic, we need to be careful about these other vines that can creep in, who can maybe stifle the branch that the Lord has called us to be and that the Lord, in a sense, is making us by our attachment to the vine. But some, if you want to call it, I think in Florida we call them invasive species. It could be sin, Satan. We have to be careful that those types of species do not, in a sense, choke us as a branch, uh, separate us in some way from the vine. Because if that happens, that branch will die. It gets its strength. It gets its nourishment. It gets the, the water that it needs to, to survive and to produce from the vine. And who's the vine? The true vine? Jesus Christ. Yeah, others will come along and say they are the vine. And in a sense, you know, uh, we might try and gra graft ourselves, as they say with trees and vines, over to another. Be cautious. Be certain it's the true vine when that change comes about in your life and that grafting is done and maybe you're moving on to some, be certain that you find yourself attached to the true vine, Jesus Christ. You know, I noted that we have an optional memorial today for the, the optional memorial of Our Lady of Fatima. Truly, the greatest disciple of all was Our Lady. Her openness to the Lord, her uh, ability to make herself totally available for Christ in what he needed. Truly a branch that was growing. Difficult at times, certainly. And we hear of that difficulty, standing before her son who hung on a cross. What, what, what a pruning exercise, if we can be crass and parallel it. But the branch became stronger. The branch knew what had to happen vis-a-vis -vis the promise that she lived out, the fiat that she lived in her life. So in these difficult times, let, let us not hesitate to turn to Our Lady and 
call, ask her intercession, particularly during this time of the coronavirus. Ask her intercession into our lives to make us the stronger branch that we are called to be, to ask her help as we set about to prune in our own life some of those things that draw from the real strength of who we are and who we are to be as a disciple of Christ. Let her help us in that pruning task in our own lives. So as we go forward in the pandemic, allow us to keep alive this parable uh, of the, the vine and the branches, knowing that Christ is the vine. He must be for you and I. But knowing that as a branch, it comes with a responsibility. It comes with a task to grow, um, to, to produce, to be fruitful. May we continue to strive to live out that call in terms of our faith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the confidence and trust that we place in our Lord, let us now bring our needs and petitions before God, the giver of all that is good. For all those who are baptized in the church, may the grace of their baptism and our participation in the life of the sacraments strengthen our commitment to Christ and the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who exercise leadership in the church throughout the world, particularly our Holy Father, that they be given the strength, the courage, to be always the pruner as the church goes forward, giving strength to disciples who are living their life out through that vine that is Christ, the true vine. For them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all those in need of God's healing this day, whether they be struck by the coronavirus or whatever other illness, physical, mental, whatever that may touch them, for them we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who tune in to this Mass today and their families, that the Spirit of Christ continue to nourish all of us <clears throat> and help us to bear fruit for the kingdom. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, particularly during the pandemic, but also for many illness, that they continue on their journey to the Lord and that the Lord give his consolation to those who miss them, who have lost, lost loved ones. For this we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And for the intercession of our Blessed Virgin Mary during this time of, of challenge, of difficulty, for this we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we entrust these prayers to you, knowing that you will hear and grant them according to your holy will. We do ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> O 
שם ירדק, אז קודם צריכים לפעמים מה עושים. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and even pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. They f therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, My peace I give you, my peace I, I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
<clears throat> Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed bring your help in this present life and ensure us through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. <laughs>